All right, we got another classroom of the elite review from Mr. H. Brandon about Yama God versus Ayana Koji, episode 7, season 3. Let's see what he has to say. The amount of hatred that I have for Yamauchi as a character cannot be stated in any amount of video length. I hate <laughs> If you're not, like, even as a proud enjoyer of the Yama God from the dark, uh, the black room memes, like, as soon as he told Michan to shut up, I just kind of tossed that aside. He is being an absolute fucking idiot. And the worst part is, he doesn't even know. You know, that's one of the most infuriating things about this character is that he doesn't even know. He's so unaware of how stupid and how much he's being used by Arisu he is, right? Because he probably thinks that he is actually the king of the school that's dating Arisu. I hate this guy. I hate him so much. And I thought after last week, all signs were pointing to finally getting rid of the plague that is Yamauchi. Not and then, yet. And then, they kind of curveball me a bit. And then they start painting a target on our boy's back. And I'm like, if you paint a target on Ayo Koji's back, mm -hmm. God help you all. But honestly, it was looking a little rough. And I was interested to see because I was like, who in the hell could be dumb enough to target him, right? Like, ooh. Yamauchi. But not actually because it's Arisu, right? Arisu keeps doing this thing where she's like declaring a war against, you know, Ayo Koji in Class 1D. But like before even the season started, it's like, all right, I'm going to crush you. That's what she said in the end of season two. Season 3 trailer shows up. She's like, oh yeah, before I crush you, I gotta take out Ichinose first. But actually, that whole pursuit of Ichinose was fake and trying to get Ana Koji's attention. So there's one example of where she fucking backstabs us after saying that the duel is off. Iteration 2, after the end of the previous arc, Aris is like, alright Ana Koji, let's go at it again. But actually, wait, special exam, hold up, let me back off. Then she does this shit with Yamauchi, which she has been preparing since the Ichinose arc. So it's like, this bitch never faces us fully. She just always say, yeah, I'm gonna play with you, but actually, let me do something else. Psych, I just backstabbed you again. Who could be, and, uh, and as soon as she drops Yamauchi, I didn't even question it. I was like, that dumb mother, f you have to be shitting me. There's no way they actually are doing this. Yeah. And then he's like, no, it's actually Sakayanagi. I'm like... Oh, that makes a lot more sense using yes, the does. dumbass as manipulation. And of course, you wouldn't actually give the, the full answer away. But it doesn't change the fact that the worst character was manipulated by a very talented manipulator yeah. in order to turn at least half of the students against Aino Ko. Or maybe Yamauchi is the one that's using everybody, dude. Maybe Aris is getting played. Maybe we are disrespecting the genius of the black room you guys saw what he did in the mountain arc y'all saw how he swiftly took out arisu i think he rizzed her up i think arisu is getting played and you know what would be crazy you know be insane if <laughs> yamauchi <laughs> was teaming up with anakoji behind the scenes and we're doing this to take out arisu i don't know how the fuck we could even make an excuse to you know play defense for yamauchi like that but just think about it if this is all just a big con and at the end of the day the white room and the black room prodigies are going band for band to take out the queen of the school and i guess when you think about it yes yamauchi is the most like you ain't gonna shed a tear if that character dies and you come to school and yeah and he's no longer coming no one's gonna class. care he's a douchebag like let's be honest but I know Koji, for a good amount of this show, wasn't really a standout. He didn't really feel valuable to the like from the class's point of view. He was because he's never valuable because he's a shadow puppet master and everyone thinks he's an NPC. And I thought that because he was still being an NPC and maybe getting like, I think it was stated he got pretty high score mark on the last couple episodes ago. But you know how he's been hitting 50s all the time. So my assumption was, oh, shit, the class is out to get on Koji because he doesn't stand out. And it's like, all right, just one other garbage character we can get rid of. We know that's not true, but actually there was more than that. It was a very much a loner vibe. Season 2 onwards, he started to impress a bit more of the track yes. and field stuff, but I could... That running scene, the running scene with Manavu, that just improved his popularity across the board, not just the girls, but the guys too. See how someone who is as much of a loudmouth could spread enough with his connections to make a good amount of people turn Connections. Against him. I don't agree with it, but I do see Kushi how does connections. happen. But the fact that the queen comes up, <laughs> class president's like no 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 we shouldn't target no one and she's like oh but we are and points i thought they're cliffhangering us i was like there's only one answer for her to say but i thought they were gonna drop a cliffhanger that would and suck holy hell i have never been more excited to see this man the only way it gets better 
is if they publicly humiliate Yamauchi on his expulsion. Bro is so fucking upset at Yamauchi, man. I've never seen anyone be this upset over Yamauchi. And honestly, again, if you're not into the black room memes, this character is absolute dookie. I agree. Like they drag him out by his legs. I don't know, tie him to a flagpole. Just torture. Waterboard him. Like this character. Waterboard him. Ryan, where you at? He's not going away. I knew our boy. I know Koji wasn't gonna get expelled. I knew there would be some twist to it, but holy hell, man, that was a bit of a roller coaster in the second half. I have a full live reaction over on my Patreon. Y'all know what to do. My, Check uh, out his Patreon. I get a couple of points in this episode. It's over there if you're interested. This was a great episode. I am loving this arc. This arc specifically is my favorite thing that we've seen in class. I do enjoy the simplicity of this arc, of it just being pure popularity votes, right? It's just like, all right, it's, it's like Survivor, right? It's just like, there's no... It is a battle of wits in the sense that you need to be able to understand what the groups are, who's in favor of, you know, voting other people out and whatnot. But, like, it's so simple, right? Just casting votes. And because of that simplicity and because someone has to get expelled, there's something actually on the line. Now, will someone actually be expelled? So far, expulsion hasn't really been that lethal to me because we just bought them back. And that was a cool twist to let us know that this is possible. But we haven't actually had someone actually get expelled just yet, right? So I'm hoping that we follow through classroom of the elite including all three seasons i love it it's the most basic of useless character right here yeah is better in sakura i don't exams care because it's basically just a popularity contest and whoever has the least amount of popularity or can be manipulated by the most popular people to side in a certain way we remove the weakest link and i think what I know Koji is kind of like looking at in a lot of ways with this test is that 20 million points like if you scrounge up 20 million points yeah, you can stop someone from being expelled. But why would you? At this point Just get rid of, of the school year, right? Like, you should remove the weakest link. Because at the end of the day, as much as class harmony was there for Inokoji's class specifically, there is some weak links. There I think we could have even better class harmony if you get rid of Hitakura and Yamauchi. It really is. Not in the way that like, oh, just because they're not super talented or they're not smart enough, but it's like, there's some generally shitty and just bad apples in the batch. And honestly, the fact that someone like Yamauchi, who was so okay with rumors and was so ready to just like bury people and hurt them. And then how quickly, like when he realizes that he's not doing so well, he just takes that, that fish. It's like a fish in the ocean, man. There's no bait on that hook. There's nothing. He's just dumb. And that's what pisses me off is that he's so painfully dumb, so painfully unaware and so painfully confident. I keep saying this, the most deadly combination in a human being is confidence and stupidity stupid people that won't question themselves to think if they're wrong or not and has the utmost belief that they are right are the most annoying dumb ignorant people to ever exist in the world and yamauchi is literally the embodiment of that but he willingly stretched his cheeks pierced that thing and said bring me up to shore i will yep i'm gonna get ate by that fisherman because that's basically what he just did with him agreeing probably with no strings attached to help spread Bro probably thinks that he's still gonna fuck Arisu at the end. It's like, he thinks he's in. He actually thinks he's in. How is he so stupid and not be aware that, like, bro, why the fuck would Arisu go for you? What do you Even offer to at her? at the end of the day, it was Saka Yanagi who was, like, the mastermind behind all this. At the end of the day, he also helped, right? Like, he, he, he pretty much, he made that class unity, that class morale fall and obviously she used the dumbest character to help yeah. you know do what she needed to do obviously you have certain characters who are basically doing their best you know basically dating the student council president in order to get pretty close it's no say it's needed i think she's like four million off or something like bro that. four million points that's four million yen right hold up hold up four million yen to usd how, what what is that? What is the what is the conversion rate? Four million yen in Japanese yen is roughly twenty six thousand dollars USD. Twenty six twenty six points. So one single date, one single date worth twenty six point seven k USD. That is the most expensive date. What the fuck, Nagumo? Surely there's more to it than just one date, right? But he did say like date me, Honami. How long does this date last? 
is it one day are we pretend boyfriend girlfriend for an arc like what's going on like that but at the end of the day when you really think about it if you scrounged up even 20 million or close to it save them points for a rainy day when there's actually someone worth saving like there's so many people that in each of these classes that you don't actually need and maybe Yamauchi. it's time we start cutting the dead weight off yes obviously given you know how they're trying to go about it it makes sense why they're not you know doing everything in their power to resist but uh for horikita not really having a lot of spotlight this season i mentioned it last week how it felt like she's getting a bit more in this episode Susan has been kind of uh, missing, huh? Like in the mountain arc, there was a cool scene where she's like kind of uh, being aware that she might be lacking in certain qualities, but she is a leader and she needs to step up, right? She's very aware of her own uh, shortcomings and she has like a cool scene with Sakura too. But beyond that, she is missing. She hasn't really done shit. And even her representation in this arc is so sad because it starts off with like, yo, Arakoji, what does my big bro like you so much more? What does Nissan care about you more than me? And then this episode was like uh, a wholesome, quote unquote wholesome meeting between siblings, right? There's this whole thing that's been set up between getting closure before Manabu graduates and Susan to talk to him and hopefully they can move on. But it's like... The whole rooftop scene only happened because of Anokoji. He straight up calls Manabu and says, Yo, can you do this for me? It's a favor. And Manabu's like, Fuck, I hate my little sister, but I'll do it for you because I love you. And then the whole rooftop scene, I wasn't even aware that this is like all because of Anokoji. And after that, I realized, Holy shit, Manabu doesn't give a fuck about Suzume. I mean, there she is like the dumb sister that's trying to like chase after this like perfect image of manabu and he even says like you only see me as a goal i am not even like a human being to you i'm your big brother but you only see me as this eternal goal and that is your shortcoming from the beginning but like i i feel like there has been some closure for sure right i think that the siblings are in a better spot that they've ever been but at the same time it was a fake meeting set up by Anakoji, so I'm considering, like, the validity of this whole closure. Is it even legit? Or last week's episode. I like what That's right. Manabu does want Koji as brother in law. He was literally asking Susan, how do you feel about Anakoji? <laughs> right? Like, come on. What they ended up doing with her brother, because, like, they say in this episode, I was like, I don't even think we've ever seen this, but it was at the very beginning of season one uh, by the school gates. That was really the Palm last strike. time they had a proper one -on -one Palm strike. conversation. One on one conversation? That was a one on one fucking duel. He palm striked her. And that was a very powerful moment seeing. <laughs> Only thing powerful was the weight of his palm. In a very vulnerable state, but almost feeling like they were brother and sister in that moment. And the confidence. <laughs> But it was fake. It was all set up for Anna Koji. Manabe was just poking at Susan. How do you feel about Koji? Do you like him? Yeah, I like him too. Let's, can we want to marry into his family? Just to go up to that class and just say, no, there is someone who should go home. And honestly, it's going to be very easy if the conversation lasts. Because he's probably going to do outbursts. He's probably going to start freaking out. And she can just logically and bluntly just hurt him. And, if and so I wonder how this is going to play out. Because Susune is going to call out Yamauchi, and I'm sure she's going to do well. And this is all part of Ayanokoji's plan, right? Ayanokoji literally said, now move, Horikita. This is your move now, right? Because he set everything up with Manabu and stuff like that. Now we're supposed to take, a, you know, uh, Yamauchi through Horikita as the proxy. But Yamauchi has all instructions from Arisu, right? Just like how Susune is being played right now, I feel like Arisu will be able to puppeteer Yamauchi to a point where he can still survive or at least make things interesting. If he were to just go out immediately like that, would it be good closure? Maybe. I I'd like to see like one last little fight from Yamauchi, right? Through whatever, you know, Arisu has planned up. Maybe Arisu's already given up and says, you know what, fuck this, this is annoying. Maybe, maybe this is not even like the focus of Arisu's plan. Maybe this is all just like a red airing and we're getting distracted and Arisu's actual plot, whatever she's trying to do, we're being blindsided because we're focusing on Yamauchi. I don't know. It's not about getting the whole class agreeing. It's just about making sure at least half of the class sides with her saying fuck that guy Be i'm just more upset that like half the class fucking sided with yamauchi to get rid of ayana koji what could have arisu possibly have said to convince them to side with yamauchi's plan i mean kushida was helping out kushida's popularity is definitely there too but at the same time like i want to know these students 
Who the fuck are these students that dare to betray us? Oh my god, they actually fucking make me mad. I don't, honestly, I don't even want to know them. If I know them, I feel like I'm going to hold a grudge against them. Because that's really all we need at this point. I think drama in Classroom of the Elite is generally pretty fun and exciting, or it can be exceptionally well done, and I think this is one of the exceptionally well done situations. I love the simplicity of just, hey, you guys did so well, you guys avoided moving someone off, and now but one of you gotta die. people are saying, no, you're going to remove someone one way or another there's always yeah that kind of carrot on the stick yeah if you have 20 million points go ahead but hell most of these classes actually all of these classes couldn't even do it by themselves we literally see that with our girl having to go date someone and we're gonna have to go date nagumo one of these days man basically use their please daddy nagumo some you know, points when your student council president's giving away that many points you're probably not going to be happy about that either because your grade's kind of in you know shit of luck sort of a thing or your class is it's such a good arc and with episode 8 probably I'm not sure if Brandon's gonna talk about the whole Asahina and you know um I, I guess maybe it was mentioned here about how we know how Nagumo has united the second years and they they're all under his control but apparently according to Asahina there are a few people that are uh anti Nagumo so just like how in class 1A's right Baldi and the Arisu they 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 got their internal war going on maybe it is not so friendly in the second year. So Asahina, I'm not sure if she's a double agent. I still don't know if I can trust her because everyone I trust ended up betraying me in this show. Asahina seems to be a core member of this faction that is kind of upset with Nagumo's way of handling things. And if Anokoji can somehow help her and maybe create this rift between second years, this is a good opportunity to get rid of Nagumo while at the same time siding with, you know, the getting the favor from Asahino. If they come out on top, then they're going to be the new rulers of the school. I'm sure if we kind of just like have a good alliance with that, it'll help us in the future too, right? So they're kind of setting up for, this is like future arc stuff, right? I'm not sure when this is going to actually pay off. Probably not even this season because I feel like after the end, because we're on like episode 7 right now, right? We have roughly like 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 episodes left, right? 5 episodes left, so... Probably one more arc after this. I don't think this is going to be like taking out Nagumo, right? I'm not sure what the final arc will be, but I doubt it's going to be handling Nagumo like that. That's probably second year stuff, huh? Student council president's giving away that many points. You're probably not going to be happy about that either because your grade's kind of in, you know, shit of luck sort of a thing or your class is. It's such a good arc. And with episode 8 probably wrapping this one up, yep. because I imagine Yamauchi gets expelled unless they pull the rug from under our feet and a different character does. I've would someone else get expelled instead of Yamach? That would be a twist, but knowing this show, I feel like that could happen because this show does like to have a lot of twists that I would have never even thought of. I swear to God, if they keep him around, I'd, I'll go through this screen and smack him myself. Now I'm curious to see what they would do because losing someone, even if they like universally agree in the school that screw that guy, it's definitely going to be a different change of pace and kind of like a kick to morale because kids are... Because, like, expulsions can happen, right? It's like the realization that, oh, shit, my life could be on the line, too. And I coach did say at the end of the mountain arc that this is the beginning of a series of events where a shitload of expulsions happen. Not just our class, but many different classes. Now, they could be just talking about this specific arc because technically four expulsions will happen, right, throughout class A, B, C, D. Assuming only first years are doing this and not other classes. So that's what I'm, I'm not sure. I hope that what Ayano Koji said at the end of the mountain arc isn't just the expulsions happening in this arc. Because I'd like it to happen a lot more often. But I would understand if this is just this arc. They were kind of being pitted against each other. It was a popularity contest. Little groups, little cliques being formed in order to just try to shield yourself. The harmony we had even like three episodes ago... <laughs> It feels like in a lot of Harmony. ways we're kind of getting back to like the beginning of season one where ten the unification is gone and honestly moving forward as we go into the second year with Nagumo being full in charge and Nagumo did say like fuck teamwork individual merit is all that matters you won't be weighed down on your incompetence of your class you will be rewarded on your own individual competence that's his core philosophy so I feel like we don't have to have a unification of a class anymore but I did enjoy the it is annoying that we have to like spend some time to help out like the idiot trio for example in season one because like yes they're fucking idiots but like they are our class and if they do bad then we do bad so that kind of thing while it was annoying it was an interesting way of kind of just like building up everybody together but as we go into second year i'm not sure how much of nagamo's philosophy is going to be actually applied 
But it would be very interesting if we don't need to rely on other people anymore. We can just kind of pop off individually. Tensions are at an all-time high, and I think that would be very interesting to see how they would leave Season 3 off, because I think by the end of this season, we should be done this school year, or pretty yeah. close to Yeah, first year will be done. I don't know. This was a this was a memorable episode. There is so many little things at play, and to watch a character like Ano Koji just kind of accept that there's not much he can really do, that someone's getting voted off, and it is what it is. And, and his reaction to him being the target... I, f I don't know what the light novel Anakoji was thinking in his head because we don't understand his monologue. I wonder if he was actually panicking or if he even had the foresight to see this through, but I wonder what he was actually thinking. Oh, they're targeting me? Interesting. I probably can't figure it out myself. Oh, you said this name? Oh, clearly the girl who walked in and took him outside the class is actually the mastermind, but still, that kind of sucks. I wonder what I'm going to do. And then in comes Horikita with the big dick energy, and I love it. Now, those are my feelings on this week's episode of Classroom of the Elite. Let me Y'all know what to do. Please go give Mr. Brandon a sub on his channel. Like his videos if you did. And I agree with them. I think of the arc so far, this one, it's so simple, but it's so juicy because expulsion is on the line. And I hope that someone actually gets expelled and we don't have this like, oh, you got expelled, but we can buy you back with 20 million points. No, I'm sorry, Yamauchi. You're going to die this time.